فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد القاعده الحادي عشر والحادية والعشرون we are in the explanation of the kitab we are in the explanation of the on the kitab al isbah في بيان منهج السلف في التربية والإصلاح written by Shaykh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Ubaylan we've taken 20 principles and inshallah ta'ala today we're going to start from the 21st principle inshallah ta'ala أن الاقتصاد بالعمل والاعتصام بالسنة عليهما مدار الدين Holding on to sunnah and being moderate in your action is what the religion revolves around according to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah believe that holding on to the sunnah and being moderate and balanced in action is what the religion revolves around. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Ya qul ya ahl al kitabi. O oh, the people of the scripture, لا تغلو في دينكم Don't fall extreme in your religion. Extremism is two things. Extremism in exaggeration and extremism in negligence. If a person overdoes something, that is extreme. And if a person falls short in doing something, they are also extreme. Both are extreme. So the one who goes out and he uh, prays five rak'ah fajr, he's doing ghulu. And the one who doesn't pray fajr is also doing ghulu. Both of them are extreme. So the individual who prays five rak'at for fajr is extreme. And the one who doesn't pray fajr at all is also extreme. Both are extreme. So many people today, they think extremism only is when you go overboard, when you exaggerate with something, but they don't understand that extremism also involves leniency. And when the person is negligent of a, uh, negligent of a matter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا Don't exaggerate. إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ Allah does not like those who exaggerate. وقال تعالى الله also said تلك حدود الله these are the boundaries of your Lord فلا تعتدوها don't exceed those limits also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says ادعوا ربكم supplicate to your Lord call unto your Lord تضرعا وخفيا call unto your Lord in a state of humility and also try to be what? Hidden. Meaning, tadarruhiyah means don't go overboard. And khufiyah means be a bit hidden, but don't go too low. So a station in between. Allah doesn't like those who exceed their limits. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ghadat al-aqaba, in the morning of the day of aqaba, the Prophet was on his riding beast and he said to the companions, Go and gather for me pebbles. Bring pebbles for me. Abdullah ibn Abbas said, I went and I brought him seven pebbles. So the Prophet ﷺ, he placed them in his palm and he looked at it and he said, The likes of these pebbles throw. The likes of these pebbles throw. Ayyuhal nasu, O people, Stay away from extremism in your religion. فَإِنَّمَا أَهْلَكَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمُ الْغُلُوءُ فِي الدِّينِ Because those who came before you, what destroyed them was extremism in their religion. رواه الإمام أحمد والنسائي الإمام أحمد والنسائي narrated this. This only involves what? 
pebbles. The Prophet sallallahu told them not, not to be extreme in their religion regarding in the pebbles which they throw. So what about aqeedah and your belief? Anas ibn Malik said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi said in a hadith al-Imam Abu Dawood narrated in his sunan لا تشددوا Don't be extreme in your religion. على أنفسكم on yourselves فيشدد الله عليكم don't make the religion too extreme and hard on yourselves that Allah makes it tough on you. فَإِنَّ قَوْمًا شَدَّدُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ A group of people, they made the religion hard on themselves. فَشَدَّدَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ And Allah made it hard on them. فَتِلْكَ بَقَايَاهُمْ فِي فِي الصَّوَامِعِ وَالْدِيَارَاتِ وَالْدِيَارَاتِ وَرُهْبَانِيَّةً يَبْتَدَعُوهَا مَا كَتَبْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ the Prophet ﷺ, he said, here are their remainings in their buildings, meaning the monks who are still extreme in their religion. And today look at those who do takfir of the people, who label people kuffar, you're a kafir, you are a kafir, you're a kafir. Give them a period of time, what do you find? That they stop practicing, they cut their beards, and they go on the streets. They are no longer practicing anymore. The Prophet said, Saddidu wa qaribu. Be moderate and also be steadfast. Be in the middle path. The Prophet said, Walayn yu shahadda deen ahadun illa ghalabahu fa saddidu wa qaribu. No one makes the religion hard on himself and overdoes it and complicates it on himself except that the religion will overcome you. Meaning, you finally can't even implement the religion because you made it so hard on yourself. Everything is kufr, kufr, kufr. And everything you said is bid'ah, bid'ah, bid'ah. So now you are, your principles are now applying on you. So you no longer can't, can't practice the religion. And if you look, brothers, you find that a lot of the people, this is what's happened to them. They were so light on making takfir on the people and they were also so light on making tabdi' on the people. You're a mubtadi', you're a mubtadi', you're a mubtadi'. That when they realized that what they were calling other people mubtadi'a for, that they themselves have fallen into it, what, what, what are they left with? The only choice that they have is to make bid'a on themselves. So what they did was they stopped practicing. So they stopped practicing. From one of these guys who was extreme in making bid'a on the people and saying, you're a mubtadi', you're a mubtadi'. I remember when he was on that stuff, he never used to give me salams. Whenever he saw me, he would walk away from me. Not even give me salams. I said from the ulama you've taken, you've taken, you take from, which you see them as a reference in these issues, they themselves don't make tabdi' on me. Even they haven't called me a muqtadi'. Ala kulli hal, he doesn't give me salams. While went back, he stopped practicing. He cut his beard, he's on the streets, he was smoking. I saw him, and when I saw him, I came up to him, I gave him salams. He said, well, alaykum. The way he gave me salams was amazing. Hugged me and said, Akhi, is everything all right? Are you doing good? Akhi, I said, yeah, I'm good, mashallah. He said, Akhi, make dua for me. I said, of course, Akhi, you're always in my dua. But one thing I'll tell you, Akhi, bikulli saraha, wallahi, I'll say one thing to you. Wallahi, I stand in front of you today, and in my heart, I don't believe I'm better than you. I stand in front of you, and I don't think, in the eyes of Allah, that I'm better than you. Maybe this is your fitna right now, but maybe I'm doing other things in my life that is greater in the eyes of Allah than what you're doing. Huh? May Allah make everyone sin. And the point is the story, well, well, the reason I mention it is because the reason what made him is extremism. When he fell into ghulu, extreme, this is what happens. <laughs> and when the person forgets, as Allah said in the Quran, كَذَلِكَ كُنْتُمْ مِنْ قَبْلُ فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ فَتَبَيَّنُوا that one time in your life, you used to be like this. You were not practicing. You had this bad traits and these bad characteristics. Now Allah has guided you and He's made you understand a bit of the religion. Don't forget those days of yours. How you used to be. How you used to like those who called you in a nice manner, in a gentle manner. That's what you used to like, right? That's what you wanted. Now that you started to practice, don't forget. Don't forget that. So what do we learn from this chapter, brothers and sisters? What we learn is the real fiqh, the real understanding of the religion is to be balanced and moderate in the deen by holding on to the sunnah. 
It is to be balanced in your actions and that is by holding on to the sunnah of the Messenger alayhi salatu salam and not to be exag- not to overdo something and exaggerate on it and also not to be negligent regarding it. Al-Qa'idatu Thaniya wal Ishroon, the twelfth Qa'ida. Qala Ta'ala Allah said in the Quran, وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْكِتَابَ إِلَّا أَمَانِيَّ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا And Allah says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَسْتَمِعُ إِلَيْكَ حَتَّى إِذَا خَرَجُوا مِنْ عِنْدِكَ قَالُوا لِلَّذِينَ هُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ مَاذَا قَالَ آنِفًا أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ طَبَعَ اللَّهُ عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ وَاتَّبَعُوا أَهْوَاءَهُمْ Allah also says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيِّنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Allah says, this qa'ida is أَنَّهُمْ يَحُثُّونَ الْأُمَّةَ عَلَى فَهْمِ الْقُرْآنِ وَالْحَدِيثِ That they urge the people. They urge the people in understanding the Qur'an and the Sunnah. That's what they push the people to, Ahlul Sunnah. They always are saying to the people, learn the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Understand the Quran and the Sunnah. Give importance to the Quran and the Sunnah. Your salvation lies in the Quran and the Sunnah. That's what they do. Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنْهُمْ أُمِّيُّونَ Amongst them are those who are ummis. They're illiterate. لا يعلمون الكتاب They don't know the kitab. إِلَّا أَمَانِيَّ وَإِنْهُمْ إِلَّا يَظُنُّونَ Except they wish. Allah also says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ Are they not pondering on the Qur'an? وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ If the Qur'an was from other than Allah, لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اِخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا Then they would have found in the Qur'an so many differences, so many contradictions. Allah also says, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَسْتَمِعُوا إِلَيْكِ From amongst the people are those who listen to you, Muhammad. حَتَّى إِذَا خَرَجُوا مِنْ عِنْدِكَ But when they leave you, قَالُوا لِلَّذِينَ أُوتُوا العلم they say to those who, have, who knowledge has given to, been given to them, ماذا قال آنفا? What did Muhammad just recently say? أولئك those who are asking that questions, ضبع الله على قلوبهم. Allah has placed a seal on their hearts. واتبعوا أهواءهم. And they have followed their desires. Allah also says, وأنزلنا إليك الذكرى. Muhammad, we have said the Quran unto you. لتبين للناس so you can clarify it for the people. ولعلهم يتفكرون. And so that the people can think and ponder over the, the words of Allah. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, مَنْ يُرِيدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا Anyone who Allah wants good for them, يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ Allah makes them understand the religion. أَخْرَجَهُ الْبُخَارِيُّ وَمُسْلِمُ If Allah wants good for you, my beloved brothers and sisters, Allah makes you understand, Allah makes you understand the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Allah makes you understand the religion. That's a person who Allah wants good for them. And if Allah doesn't want good for you, then that means Allah will not make you understand the Quran and the Sunnah. So that's why Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, wherever they go, they call the people to understanding the Quran and the Sunnah. They urge them to learn that over any other sciences. My beloved brothers and sisters, from the things that will bring the Muslims up, that will bring the Muslims and give the Muslims the upper hand, nuhub, nurture the Muslims, is two things. The first thing is ma'rifatu ma'arad Allah wa rasuluhu, understanding what Allah and His Messenger meant and they intended. Bi al fadil kitabi wa sunnah. When you look at the Quran and when you look at the sunnah, you have to try to understand what Allah means by this word and what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam means by this word by learning the Arabic language the second thing is ma'rifatu understanding 
ma qalahu as-sahaba to that which the companions have said wa tabi'una that which the students of the companions have said bi ihsan wa sa'ira ulama'i al-muslimin and also what the other scholars of Islam have also said fi ma'ani tilka al-alfaz what they have said regarding regarding the Quran and the Sunnah And Imam Malik rahimahullah he said, Inna aqwaman ibtagaw al-ibadah. And Imam Malik said, a group of people, what they wanted was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they wanted to worship him, they worshipped him, sorry. They're a group of people, Imam Malik said. They wanted to worship Allah, but they forsaked, they forsaked knowledge. فَخَرَجُوا عَلَىٰ أُمَّةِ مُحَمَّدٍ بِأَسْيَافِهِمْ And so they came out on the Ummah of Muhammad with their swords. وَلَوِ بِتَغَوِ الْعِلْمِ لَحَجَزَهُمْ عَنْ ذَلِكِ But if they went towards knowledge, it would have stopped them from going out and bombing and killing the people. So what does Imam Malik's statement show? A group of people wanted to worship Allah. They wanted to come with righteous actions. They wanted to do things that are part of their religion. But they did all of that with what? Without no knowledge. They left knowledge. So what happened? So they came out on the Ummah of Muhammad with their swords. They started to kill innocent people. They started to kill innocent people. And he said, Imam Malik said, if they were to go towards knowledge and they were to give importance to knowledge, then that would have stopped them from the evil which they are in. So what is it that happened to the Khawarij? They stayed away from understanding the Quran and the Sunnah. What happened to ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the likes of them? They stayed away from what? Understanding the Quran and the Sunnah. And that's why they are dwelling in the harm that they're in. That's why they are killing innocent women and children. Because they have not studied the religion. That's why the Prophet ﷺ, he said, يَقْرَأُونَ الْقُرْآنَ They read the Qur'an. لَا يُجَاوِزُ حَنَاجِرَهُمْ The Qur'an does not go towards their hearts, meaning they don't understand it. Where is it that the person understands the religion from? Their hearts. The religion doesn't go deep into their hearts. They don't understand what they are reading. So they don't have understanding of what? The Qur'an and the Sunnah. So Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'a, in order to battle these corrupt ideologies out there, what Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah do is they tell the people to study and learn. Because what destroys evil is knowledge. Every extremism that you see in whatever form or shape it is, are you with me brothers and sisters? The way to destroy it is by knowledge and by learning. Every deviant group doesn't want you to study. Look at Izbut Ta'areer, they won't allow you to go and study with ulama and the mashayikh. They will warn you from the mashayikh. When you look at tabligh, They'll say to you, la la la, balligu ani wa law ayah. Just one ayah is enough, that's all you need. So yesterday you came into the gathering, today you're giving bayan, and you're a person of knowledge. They, they reference you and they tell you to give lecture to the people. So they don't tell you to go to the ulama and study with them. If you look at those who are on extreme tabdi' fulan is mubtadi', 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 they warn you against all the ulama and the mashayikh. Every scholar is a mubtadi', don't take knowledge from them. They warn you against, from, from the, they warn you from the ulama, and they don't allow you to study from them. All of that is so they can keep you. Because when you're ignorant, you're blind, you're dumb, you're deaf. So they can keep you. But the people of Haq, they push you to study. They tell you to study. They tell you to learn the Quran and the Sunnah. They tell you to go learn the Arabic language. Some of these people who are extreme today in, in making tabdi' on a person, one of them, one time I met him, and I, he said to me, he said to me, Akhi, uh, what, what are you doing recently? And I said, Alhamdulillah, I'm studying uh, Usul al-Fiqh. This was many years back. He said, Usul al-Fiqh? Really? Ya, I advise you not to study Usul al-Fiqh. What do you mean? Don't study Usul al-Fiqh, Akhi. Man, there's got too much ilm kalam in there. Don't study it, Wallah. What book are you studying? I said, Al-Waraqat. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim. Are you studying Al-Waraqat? Are you studying Al-Waraqat? I said, Naam. He said, Akhi, don't, 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 don't. Wallah is wrong. I said, Sheikh ibn Uthaymeen explained uh, the nadm of al-waraqat. He explained, he said, he's wrong, he shouldn't have. The poet said, Atana anna sahlan dhamma jahlan, uluman laysa ya'arifuhunna sahlu. 
علوم لو دراها ما قلاها ولكن الرضا بالجهل سهل is ignorant and to be pleased with ignorance is easier for so many people than to go and attain knowledge so they find a shortcut wallahi that's the truth the people who hate a science and hate a knowledge they hate it because they can't learn it because they saw that they can't learn wallahi brothers and sisters I say this to you those who've gone extreme in making takfir of the people and those who've gone extreme in making tabdi' of the people if you look at them they actually looked at knowledge and saw how long it is mm. the path of knowledge is long mm. is there a shortcut and they realize that the shortcut is to sit around and to look like the people of knowledge by saying fulan is a kafir sulan is a mubtadir uh, so this is the way to somehow seem like a person who's a who's a student of knowledge shaykhuna shaykh abdi kirim al-khudair what did he say turuk what they did was those who like looked at the path and said you know what i'm gonna study inshallah i know it's long it needs a lot of my time it needs jid wal ijtihad and i'm going to embark on that path it requires for me to wake up early morning and study i'm going to do it inshallah ta'ala and they take on the path those who do that who take that path on they realize they can't so they stand in front of them they block them from the path they block them that's why shaykh abdikrim said turuq. They, high, they are highway robbers they want to stop you from that path but the way to, to overcome all of that is not to listen to them if every dog that barked you threw a rock at it then that the value of the rock would be very high right yeah you with me brothers not every single body who speaks and shouts and screams for you from different directions what was the prophet what did the prophet tell us the Prophet said, this is my path, follow it. And don't follow those paths that are deviated from those paths. The Prophet told us in the hadith, وَعَلَى كُلِّ طَرِيقٍ مِنْهَا شَيْطَانٌ On every of those paths, there are shaitan calling you. Don't listen to the shaitan. Don't ever, if you turn, as Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, if you turn, he is taking you. If you just look at him, say, who, huh? The split seconds, the couple of second minutes that he takes away from you is a problem. Don't even look at him. Just keep moving. Just keep moving. He'll slow you down. Even if he doesn't stop you, he will what? He'll slow you down and your life is, wallahi, your, your life is important for you. Are you with me, brothers? So, every person who's calling to the sunnah is pleased when you learn. Wallahi, they are pleased with you learning. Because they know the more you study, the more you're going to know that what they are calling you to is the truth. Sah? That's the truth. Al-Qa'idah to Thalitha wal Ishirun. The 13th Qa'idah. But remember, before I move on to the 13th Qa'idah, what is it that we, when, it, when you understand the religion, how is it that you can prosper? How can you, I already mentioned it to you, that when you're learning the Quran and the Sunnah, what does it mean and how does it mean you learn it? You learn what does Allah mean by this? There's a difference between what Allah said and what Allah means. Yes. What Allah said is something. What Allah means is something. For example, Allah says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ وَيُّ Be to those who pray. Destruction and the hellfire be for those who pray. Didn't Allah say that? Did Allah not say that? I'm asking you brothers and sisters, did Allah not say that? He did say that. Is that what He meant like it? That is not what Allah wanted. And it's not what Allah meant. What Allah meant is reading the whole context and what He said in the whole context. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ Those who delay their prayer when negligence regarding their prayer. صح? So the ayah has a saying. So you can't say to me, فَوَيْلُ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ Did Allah say it? And I say to you, no, Allah didn't say it. That's kufr. Allah did say it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is a verse of Allah. But is that what Allah meant? So what you're studying is what Allah meant. ما أراد الله That which Allah meant. And that which the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam meant. And how can you know what Allah and His Messenger meant? Is studying the dhamair. Wallahi, 90% of the people who are misguided and read the Quran incorrectly, they don't know the pronouns in the Quran. Studying the pronouns, where it goes back to. Are you with me? And who is it referring back to? Who is it talking to? And who does it mean? As Allah said in the Quran, for example, 
and fa idan salakha al-ashhur al-huruma faqtul al-mushrikin haythu wajadtumuhum wajadtumuhum wherever you find them who is them yeah but the pronoun which mushriks is Allah talking about is it unrestricted mushrikin what's the meaning under the ayah you have to understand the dhamir and the pronoun, or else you can understand that is wherever you see a disbeliever slice his throat, kill him. You're not reading it. Ma'arad Allah wa Rasuluhu that which Allah and His Messenger intended. Are you there? Allah says in the Quran, "Bala, bala, man kasab sayyatan wa ahatat bi khatiatu, faulaik ashab al-nar hum fiha khalidun." Anybody who comes with sin, bala man kasab sayyat, sin. وَأَحَاطَتْ بِهِ خَطِئَةُ And his sins overcome him. فَأُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ هُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ خَالِدُونَ They're in this hellfire forever. Khawarij said, look, this is our evidence. That the sins take you to hellfire forever. So it means by doing the sins, you're a kafir. 